Hi everyone, welcome to Parkside at Home, and no matter where you are watching from, we are so excited that you have chosen to join us for the next 20 minutes or so. Our desire is to see as many people as possible feel connected and experience the life-transforming message of Jesus. So if you've been impacted by your experience, why not take a moment to share the link on whatever platform you are watching on right now. This will help us spread the news of this amazing bridge building community and invite others to be a part of it. Everything we do at Parkside and in our community is because of your generosity. Why not consider becoming one of our giving partners? To do this, the easiest way is to simply go to our website at parkside.life slash give. Follow the prompts on your screen and you can give a one-time gift or set up for recurring giving. By doing this, we partner together to build bridges between people and Jesus. Today, I want to encourage you with two things, connecting to God and connecting to others. Why not spend some time getting to know a God who loves you, who listens to you, and who wants to lead you and connect with others? We need each other. We need to be supportive and encouraging to one another. We want to invite you to connect one time a month or more if you can, and we have a set different ways that you can do that. By engaging in Parkside at home, just like you're doing right now with people in your home, or maybe you want to consider inviting a few friends over and having a watch party together and sharing the experience, or join one of our bands. These small groups make sure that every person is given the tools and relationships that they need to have a solid grasp on what God's Word says. The Word of God is an essential part of our bridge building story. You can get more information and sign up on our website at parkside.life slash bands or join us at 113 Minus Street for a live experience on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. The important thing is for us to connect to God and connect to others. So the easiest way for you to figure out what is my next step is simply visiting parkside.life slash next steps for more details. So with that being said, the moment you've been waiting for is here. Our experience is about to begin and it all starts right now. Welcome to Parkside at Home. I am so glad that you are here with us. It has been a few weeks since I've had the opportunity to teach, so I'm really excited to share with you this week about what the Lord has put on my heart as we begin a brand new year together, which is kind of hard to believe. And you might be thinking, well, Deborah, it's already a couple weeks into January. Are we really still talking about the new year? But I'm going to be honest with you. I really have felt like I kind of needed to ease into this one. And I don't know if you're with me on that, but I don't know that I'm quite ready to just all in jump into 2021 at this point. 2020 was quite a year and we all know that we've talked about it a lot. And I think we're all just kind of testing the waters of 2021 at this point. Like, how is this really going to go? I'm not sure that I really want to get too invested or too excited just yet. But I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person who really loves a new year. I love the beginning of a, of a new year. I like the feel of a clean slate. I like the idea of a fresh start. And I'm a pen and paper person. So I get really excited about a new planner and a new calendar and new plans and new goals. But last year really kind of knocked us for a loop and we're not really sure what to expect for this year. And some of you are like, I'm not even wasting money on a planner for 2021. And listen, I get it. I do. A lot of times we get to January 1st and it's like, new year, new me. But right now it may be more like, new year, 
same me, or maybe even after last year, worse me. It makes sense, but my question for you today is this. Who do you want to become this year? Like, honestly, when we get to the end of this year and we look back over 2021, who do you want to be? How do you want to be different? And I'm not talking about I want to lose 30 pounds or I want to be in a relationship or I want to buy a house. And I'm not saying that any of those things are bad. But what I'm talking about here is bigger than that. It's deeper than that. Who do you want to become in 2021? Because the truth is, I think it's time to stage a comeback. 2020 took a lot from us in a lot of ways, and it didn't really give us a whole lot in return. Other than, honestly, some pretty funny memes. Because when you think about it, like, the internet was a hoot last year when it wasn't a dumpster fire. I found some things on the interwebs in 2020 that still, to this day, make me laugh. But as much as 2020 took from us, I think one of the things that it really gave us in all truth, in all honesty, is this gift of perspective, a sense of what really matters. And I think it's important to take what we know now and walk into this new year with intention and purpose and even a sense of excitement. I really believe that that's possible. So as we've started this new year, one of the questions that I've asked myself is, who do I want to be at the end of 2021? And for me, the answer for that is that I want to be someone who looks like Jesus. I want to be someone who consistently and intentionally spends time with Jesus. Because the truth of the matter is, when you do that, you will become different. You will walk into who he has created you to be because you cannot spend time with Jesus, real time with him, and walk away unchanged. And that will impact everything else. So for me, that's the starting point. I think for us, that's the starting point of who do you want to be at the end of 2021? This is where we begin the comeback. I know this to be true. Because when I'm not spending time with Jesus, I am the worst version of myself. And to be honest with you, that's one of the reasons why I haven't taught in seven weeks. When we got to December of last year, I was really overwhelmed. I had a lot of things on my plate. And it just got to the point where the one thing that I wasn't doing was the one thing that I knew to do that was the right thing to do, and that was spending time with Jesus. I wasn't consistent, I wasn't intentional, and I was not the best version of myself. And so I knew that something had to change. And when I think about the idea of a comeback, I think of the underdog, of rallying from a deficit. I think of a man named Lassie Viren, who you probably have no clue who that is, and I didn't until just a few days ago. But in 1972, at the start of the Summer Olympic Games in Munich, Germany, Lassie Viren was a 23-year-old policeman from Finland, a small little village in Finland. And he wasn't widely known. In fact, the heats for the 10,000-meter race were his Olympic debut. Just before the halfway mark of the final race, Lassie stumbled and fell and his victory seemed to just be gone. In fact, his fall caused another runner who had actually won the 5,000 meter race in the 1968 Olympics to trip over him. And that runner gave up two laps later. But Lassie calmly got to his feet and chased his way back into contention, overtaking the runner from Britain who had been in the lead most of the race. And Lassie came back not only to win the gold medal, but to set a world record of 27 minutes and 38.4 seconds. And then 10 days later, he also won the 5,000 meter, also in Olympic record time. And these were wins that he actually repeated again four years later at the Montreal Olympics. The thing is, Lassie staged a comeback. He got knocked down but he got back up 
and he came from behind and he won the race. It makes me think of a passage of scripture that's one of my absolute favorites from Hebrews 12 verses 1 through 3. And this is where we're going to focus our attention for um, during this time together. This is what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and this sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. As we head into this new year, looking back at what 2020 was, and for a lot of us, we look at the loss, we look at the devastation, we look at the the heartbreak, we look at how life just isn't normal anymore. And we head into 2021 with all of that still weighing on us. But I believe it's time to make a comeback, to say, yes, 2020 knocked us down. It may have tripped us up, but... We're in the beginning of a new year and we have this opportunity and we want to be intentional and not just intentional, but excited about this year ahead of us. So how do we do that? Well, I think there's three things that we can do. The first one is I think we have to prioritize what matters. In this passage of scripture from Hebrews verse one, it says, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. There is a race that God has for us, a unique race for each of us as individuals who follow Christ. And we have to run that race with perseverance. It's the race that has been marked out for us. And we have to prioritize that. We have to look at what God has for us and believe that it's important. And we have to make that a priority to run that race well. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, This is a verse that if you've been around Parkside for a while, you've heard these verses a lot. But verses 14 and 15 say this, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. The truth is, This life that we live is not our own. If we are following Christ and we are believers and we have surrendered our lives to him, then we don't live for ourselves anymore. We live for him and we should do that joyfully. But that should be the priority. The priority, the thing that matters is living the life that God has called us to live. And I think when we begin to prioritize what matters, we will begin to be able to take those steps to make that comeback into this new season and into this new year and into all that God has for us. The second thing that I think that we can do is that we can give grace, but not make excuses. Again, in verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 12, it says, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. The thing that I've learned is that I can be really hard on myself. I'm the kind of person that I like a a new year. I like a clean slate. I like to set goals. But if I'm being honest with you, what I tend to do is I set these plans and these goals and I have these big dreams for the year. And I get a few weeks into January, right about now, and I've missed the mark on some things. I haven't been as consistent as I've wanted to be. And honestly, as bad as this is, I look at all of it and say, well, I've failed. I've messed up. I may as well scrap it all. I'll start again next year. And I've learned that it's okay to give myself some grace. It's okay to say, you know what, this was my goal. And maybe I missed a day here or there. I wasn't as consistent as I wanted to be. But that doesn't mean that I give up. This is a race that we are running with perseverance. So give yourself some grace. You're setting new habits. It's okay. It'll take time. But at the same time, we can't make excuses. We can't say, well, it's too hard. Or I've already messed up. What's the point? Oftentimes, we give ourselves 
maybe too much grace and that turns into excuses and then we find ourselves thinking, I don't even know how I got here, but I know that this isn't where I want to be. There are going to be things that will try to hinder us from running this race that God has set before us. And this scripture says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. We know that the life of a believer is one that our enemy, the devil, does not want us to live well. We know that his agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy, and he will do everything he can to do that. But I believe that we can do what this scripture is calling us to do. To throw off the things that hinder us. The sin that so easily entangles us. That wants to trip us up. And when I think about that race that last year and ran, he got tripped up. And he could have said, I fell. That's the end. I'll never make it back to the front. What's the point of even trying to finish? But he got up. And in not, he didn't even just finish. He won the race. And I believe with all of my heart that the God that we serve enables and equips us not to just get back up and finish the race, but to finish it well. So yes, give yourself some grace. Don't be so hard on yourself when you mess up and make mistakes, because you will. We all do. But we can't make excuses, because when we do that, we quit trying. And God has so much more for us. The third thing that I believe that we can do is that we can focus. One of my favorite things about this verse is, or this section of verses from Hebrews chapter 12 is in verse 2. It says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. We have to be people who keep focus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. That means eyes locked on Jesus. When you run a race, you've got to know where your focus is. And so often this world that we live in wants to distract us. It wants to have us take our eyes off Jesus and, and focus on the things around us. Because listen, we know there are so many things around us right now. So many things. And it's not that those things don't deserve our attention at times. They're important. There are important big things happening in our world that we as believers do need to address from a biblical perspective, from a godly perspective. But if we as individuals focus more on those things than we focus on Jesus, we are going to still falter and fall. We fix our eyes on Jesus because he alone is the author and the perfecter of our faith. When we allow him to write our story and keep our eyes focused and fixed on him, those distractions don't become the important thing. I think oftentimes what can happen with those distractions is sometimes those distractions become our religion. They can become an idol. And we allow those things to take our focus and they take the place of God. And I don't want to dig into all of the details of that. I think we can all look at the world around us and see where that is happening. But I want to challenge you. I'm challenging myself to fix my eyes on Jesus, to focus in on him. And I think there's two parts to this focus. I think the first part is that we have to keep going. We can't give up. Verse 3 in Hebrews 12 says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. It would be so much easier to give up some days than to keep going. There is a lot weighing us down. There is a lot vying for our attention. There is a lot that needs our attention. And it gets overwhelming. And for me, sometimes it's like, if I can't fix it, then what's the point? If I, if I can't figure out the answer to the problem, what's the point? But I believe that Jesus wants us to keep going. It says that we, he doesn't want us to grow weary and lose heart. Friends, it would be so easy to do that. But I want to challenge you to keep going. Persevere. Don't give up. Stay in the race. 
And the second part of that is that I think we need to find our cheering section. The way that this passage of scripture starts out, it says, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. If you back up to Hebrews chapter 11, we refer to that as kind of the hall of fame of faith. And that scripture lists all of the people who by faith live their lives. And I would encourage you to go back and read Hebrews chapter 11 and then read into Hebrews chapter 12 this week and really reflect on what these verses say. But I think that it's important that we have a cheering section. We have a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on, but you are also surrounded by people who are cheering you on. Lean into them. We need the encouragement. We need to be reminded to keep going. We need to be reminded that we are not alone. We say this all the time at Parkside, that community is important. We believe that we cannot do life alone. The scripture very clearly lays that out. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This beautiful passage of scripture reminds us to keep going, to not lose heart, that we are being encouraged by a great cloud of witnesses from heaven above and on the earth as well. Find your cheering section, lean into them, lean into their encouragement, ask for prayer, don't do life alone. These are the things that will help us keep our focus. And we do all of this by spending time with God. And like I said in the beginning, for me, that is my number one goal and, and intention this year, that when I get to the end of this year, I want to have spent so much time with Jesus that I have become so much like him, that I'm different then from who I am now in all of the best ways. I would also encourage you that if memorizing scripture this year is one of the things that you want to do, start with these three verses from Hebrews. Put them in a place where you'll see them. Meditate on them. Be challenged by them. Study them. Dig into them. Commit them to memory and then live out these words. And I also want to remind you of this. Yes, we're in the beginning of a new year, but... These words aren't just reserved for the new year. This is an opportunity that we have every single day. Maybe one day isn't so great, but you can wake up the next morning and begin again. Because one of my favorite passages of scripture reminds us of this. Lamentations chapter three, starting with verse 17 through 24. And as I read these words, I want you to really think about what the writer is saying. And it made me think about everything we've been through in the past year and how beautifully these words apply to where we are today. It says, I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say my splendor is gone and all that I hoped from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness. I remember them well and my soul is downcast within me. Doesn't that kind of feel like an accurate description of how we have felt coming out of this past year? Yet I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. I share these words with you as we close this time out together as a reminder that every single day, the Lord's mercies are new. His compassion is never ending. We are not consumed. His faithfulness is always with us. 
So maybe today wasn't great, but guess what? Tomorrow's coming. His mercies are new every morning and they are new for me and they are new for you. We serve a God who is faithful. We serve a God who is trustworthy. And so as we stage a comeback this year, coming back from behind and saying this year, this is who I want to become. And when I look back at the end of this year, this is who I want to be. I challenge you to prioritize what matters. Give yourself some grace, but don't make excuses. And focus on Jesus. I believe that these things, if we do them well, will allow us to look at this coming year and then we reflect back on the end of the year and say, that's exactly what I want. And that's exactly who I want to become. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you so much for your faithfulness. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your word and how it challenges us and encourages us. And I pray that, that these words from scripture would spark an excitement in our hearts for the year ahead, for who we have the opportunity to become in these next few months but even more so, God, just in the day to day that we would be reminded of how faithful you are. We love you so much. We thank you for the opportunity to grow. We thank you that you want to challenge us to become who you have created us to be. And I pray that we would have the perseverance and the endurance to do so. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.